I'd now like to introduce um, Rachel Foss, who's the head of contemporary and archival and manuscripts collections at the British Library. And she's going to just talk briefly about a born digital collection that we've acquired and that's going to be available in the reading rooms. It's by, um, some of you may know the writer, Hanif Qureshi. I remember him from um, growing up and reading The Buddha of Suburbia and um, I was very much into Prince and he wrote a lot about the Black Album, if some of you know about Prince. But anyway, it's my little geek moment there. Um, so um, I'm going to hand over to um, Rachel, who's going to talk a little bit more about this archive. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, I'm Rachel Foss. I'm head of Contemporary Archives and Manuscripts. Uh, and that my, my collection area uh, is essentially archives and manuscripts in both paper and uh, born digital form, uh, spanning approximately 1950 to the present and across all subject areas. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit, uh, not perhaps not just about the Hanif Qureshi archive, but a little bit about um, this subject area as a whole, born digital archives as a whole, uh, what we have and what we're currently trying to do with them, with a particular focus on uh, what we're trying to do with the Hanif Qureshi archive at the moment. Uh, we've got particular collecting strengths, uh, said my area is, is, is across all disciplines. We have particular collecting strengths in uh, literature, um, theatre and drama, in history of science, particularly cybernetics and evolutionary biology, and in uh, politics and uh, public life. Um, so just to very quickly to run through um, what these collections are, we acquire personal archives directly from living individuals and from uh, families and estates of people after their death. Um, alongside personal archives, we also hold corporate archives, which uh, relate to publishing houses, theatre agencies, uh, campaigning groups and societies um, and other, um, other organisations. Currently, uh, a lot of the born digital records we hold uh, form part of la larger hybrid collections, which also have traditional paper elements. And this is because we tend to acquire these collections towards the end of somebody's career. Uh, so somebody born in 1945 will have adopted uh, computer usage relatively late in their careers, usually. Uh, but naturally, the nature of these collections are, are changing as um, computer usage and increasingly fragmented habits of uh, uh, computer usage um, uh, take, take step and are reflected in our collections. So we expect it will only be a couple of years, um, if that, before we start to acquire personal and organisational archives that are wholly born digital. So um, a word on the types of uh, material you can expect to, to find in these collections. Those are some, uh, some examples of, of people we hold, Hanif Qureshi among them. Um, within the literary archives, uh, so John Berger, Michael Holroyd, um, Wendy Cope, Harold Pinter and others, um, most usually the born digital material in these archives is in the form of word processing and text files which comprise successive drafts of a writer's creative work from first jottings through to successive stages through to final publisher's proofs. And this is an important resource as it allows a researcher to uh, trace the evolution of a literary text from genesis to finished product, um, along with emails, discs, uh, CDs, USB sticks. And occasionally less common digital objects appear too. Uh, the archive of the novelist Graham Swift for example, includes a cassette from his answer phone, which we persuaded him to throw in at the last minute, um, containing messages of congratulations from a series of increasingly enthusiastic and increasingly inebriated callers on the night that he won the Booker Prize. Um, the personal archives of Harold Pinter, John Berger, Wendy Cope, Ruth Prower, Javala and Hanif Qureshi have words, word drafts and emails. Um, and electronic records can also be found in the corporate archives, as I've said, such as the, the Virago Publishing Archive. And we're just about, um, hopefully in the next few weeks anyway, to um, announce uh, a writer's archive that we've just acquired, uh, which, contains, which um, includes his hard drive. So it's the first uh, hard drive of a writer that we have in the library's collection. So we're very excited about that, but unfortunately I can't tell you just now who it is, but watch this space. 
Um, we hold some very significant personal archives of scientists uh, too, which as a rule have a larger component of born digital material and a higher proportion of media objects, including creators' hard drives. This uh, slide um, shows a, a selection of the file formats, media carriers and operating systems uh, to be found in the Born Digital Archives that we currently hold. So as you'll see, it's a fascinating array and uh, taken together, you can read a history of technology and indeed a history of technological obsolescence uh, within the collections that we have. Processing this material and making it useful for researchers um, involves a multi-stage workflow from acquisition, which can include, or generally does include, um, off-site capture at an individual's house or an organisation's offices uh, or from the cloud. Um, ingest uh, the extraction of files from the original, original material for storage, uh, permanent storage in a secure repository and the creation of master and access copies. Cataloguing, arranging and ordering the material to allow researchers to access it, including a sensitivity review of content which may fall under the Data Protection Act or have other privacy issues. This very live issue for us, as you can imagine, with uh, the, the recent nature of the material we hold. And finally, access, making material available to researchers. And our main focus um, at the moment is on the last of these stages, um, access. Uh, that slide just gives a number of the, a number of the challenges uh, which we hold and access and user education and user expectations is one. Um, so I'm currently working, as Mahendra has said, uh, with uh, Stella Wisdom and the Digital Scholarship Team on an access pilot for the Born Digital material within the Hanif Qureshi archive. Um, Qureshi most famous for the Buddha of suburbia and uh, for really being the first writer to represent multicultural Britain in uh, popular fiction. And he's often taken as a spokesman for that. Um, the Born Digital material in Qureshi's archive comprises drafts relating to many of his uh, novels and screenplays. The most concentrated material we have um, are the drafts of Something to Tell You, which is his uh, most recent but one novel. Um, and there are over 50 uh, drafts, 50 odd drafts of that single work. Um, and there is, uh, we established as part of the negotiations before we acquired the archive, there is significant textual progression within these files. Um, it's not all just duplicates of the same thing. So we are planning to make this material av available to readers via the manuscripts reading room later this month. Um, it will be accessible on an individual terminal through the library's FTP server um, and readers will be emailed a link to access it on request. We're uh, essentially adapting a model that is already in use in the library for researchers uh, who want to access some of the collections within the British Library's Endangered Archives programme. Um, archives that, because they contain sensitive personal data, cannot be made available online. Within the contemporary Born Digital archives, our access model will evolve. Um, this is really, a, as I say, a pilot. We want to push some material through the pipeline to get it out there, let people get at it and see how we can uh, improve our processes from that point. Um, but we are very aware, of course, of uh, researchers' expectations, and that's one thing we really want to talk uh, a little bit more about. Um, it's very counterintuitive. Um, we realised to be asked to come to a physical building to access born digital records. But um, as is the case with some of the library's uh, you know, journal collections, licensing agreements with publishers and so on, um, to comply with a copyright framework, uh, uh, copyright law, we have to um, make provision on site on the library's premises. Um, a next step would be to negotiate with individual depositors and rights holders, and that may be a step further down the line. So we are currently looking for uh, volunteers, really, and interested parties um, who can help us to test the Hanif Qureshi material specifically, and who also might be willing to offer us feedback and uh, about our, our approaches to born digital material and modest models of access more widely. These discussions will be extremely valuable for us, um, as they will inform and shape how we, how we, how we treat this material. Uh, we want to be user-led in how we uh, make this uh, material available. 
As there's very little currently, uh, not just, well, not, uh, this is the first um, access pilot in the, in the British Library, there's little, uh, very little of this kind of material available, um, publicly available through any institution. Um, we're lacking user feedback and engagement with users, so we're very, very keen indeed to start some uh, conversations. So if anybody here is, uh, or knows anyone who is interested in, um, in bondage archives, but perhaps particularly uh, literary bondage archives. And if anyone's got a burning interest in Hanif Qureshi specifically, that would be an amazing fit, but it doesn't have to be. It really is bondage archives as a whole. Um, uh, both Stella and I would be extremely happy to um, talk to hear from you and, and talk more. Um, and our contact details are there. So thank you very much for your time.